In the first video, we talked about uh, nipping and things we could do to prevent the dog from mouthing. Now, as we're discussing kind of the dog's day-to-day -day routine, the guardians have ordered a puppy playpen area, and it will be here in a couple of days. Uh, I have it on Quest Ed, and I find if you have a puppy, it is one of the best things you could possibly do. Now, a lot of people just do a kennel training situation, and this is kind of what uh, Tank's family started him off as. However, as a puppy this age, he really doesn't have the ability to hold his bladder for very long, and the kennel is not a super exciting place to be. It's pretty limited. Now, it's part of the reason why we limit them is we don't want them to go out and have accidents. But at this age, because he has such a limited capacity of holding his bladder, um, and also, Sarai's need to cool down, having the puppy play at pen gives him the ability to learn to practice being by himself one of the benefits that it will do is it will help kennel train him but in this situation because we've been putting him in the kennel leaving him in the kennel he's starting to already not like being in the kennel so i'm going to go through some things off camera that's going to help him get uh create more of a positive association with the kennel again but there are some tricks that you can do to help your dog want to go in the kennel I like getting marrow bones when a dog is this size. A marrow bone is going to be, you can get like half inch, inch, two inch. For his age, you want to get half inch or inch. Now you get these in a place like the Green Spot in Omaha or Long Dog Fat Cat. They should be frozen. Keep them in your freezer. Don't leave them in your fridge. They will stink pretty quickly. So what I do is I put it in the, uh, what, uh, when, I, when they first start getting it, they're frozen. So they'll lick on them, they'll chew on them, but they can't really get to the marrow yet. What will happen when it kind of claws out is I take a pen or something, I'll drill a hole through the marrow, and I get a zip tie, and I will zip tie it to the back of the kennel, low. So the only way that he can chew on this thing is by being inside the kennel, where the kennel door is open. The kennel door should let, be left open in the play area so he can come and go as he wants. We're not going to close it like for at least a month or two. Now, before you start zip tying it, I would, when you first get it, I would put it, let him lick on it a little bit in the puppy play room, and when he gets really interested, Take it away, and I have a section on Quest Ed about creating, uh, uh, preventing resource guarding, which is where you give the dog an item, take it away, give it a treat, then give them back the item, and get them used to it. So they understand, just because a human takes away some good stuff doesn't mean that I have to worry about it because they're going to give me something better. So basically, what I would do is let them chew on it a little bit in the puppy playroom, take it away from them, give them a treat, then go put it in the kennel, close the kennel door with him outside of the kennel. So he goes over to the kennel and says, but let me in there. I want to go get this good stuff that's in the kennel. So you create a desire for him to want to go into the kennel to get it. So after he whimpers a little bit, that's when I would take it out. I would drill the hole through it. Uh, and again, it's just through marrow. So you could use a pen or a pencil or something like that. Then get a zip tie and put it really low on the inside of the kennel. And so that he can go ahead and chew it while he's laying down in the kennel, but he can't take it outside of the kennel. You can also do this like with a uh, calm filled with peanut butter and other items like that. Uh, um, you just you know have to be careful what you put on. Uh, if you do like uh, an antler and the antler is zip tied to it, they might chew off the zip tie to get to the antler itself. So, but that creates, those are two little tricks to get the dog used to and wanting to go in the kennel. Now the other thing we can do is every time that we get a new, new, get a new toy, we should put it in the kennel while the dog is outside of the play area. So we're let him in the playroom. He goes over there and every time, oh man, I go in the little kennel and there's a new toy for me today. This is a magic box. Every time I come in here, something good happens to me. Right now, every time they put me in the kennel is when they leave me alone. And I'm a dog, I'm a social creature, so I wanna be with them. So I look at being put in the kennel as two things, a punishment because I'm being excluded from the group and I'm restrained. So it's a double negative. So that's why creating a puppy play pen, putting it in there where the only soft bedding is inside the kennel creates more of a motivation for him to sleep in the kennel. Putting the, uh, the marrow bones in the back of the kennel tied to it creates more of a desire to go in there. So we want to create more positive associations and, and uh, that will help him have a better uh, uh, perception of the kennel. So these are some of the tricks that you can use to help your dog get over its fear of the kennel and actually consider it a safe place. One last thing before I forget, a lot of people put the dog in a kennel when it's being bad. Time out is how they think about it. The kennel should never be used that way. We want the dog to only have a positive association. So putting it in the kennel when it's being bad is creating a negative association. We want them to feel comfortable. So if I'm overwhelmed, there's a party going on, it's too much for me, I can go to the kennel. So if you do have friends, uh, like uh, you have relatives over for the holidays, you said you had a lot of little kids. If he goes to his kennel, we should have a rule for the kids that your kids are different because they're older, but little kids, they cannot go and take him out of the kennel. He goes in the kennel, that is his safe place. 
Otherwise, I've seen dogs that develop a biting habit because the kids, little kids, sometimes parents are not very good observant. They'll let their kids just play with the dog. The dog's like, I'm tired, I'm cranky, stop, 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 and they won't stop, so then they go to a bite. So we want him to have a safe place. I go here, I'm safe, I don't have to worry about it. This is my happy place. So this is, again, my uh, second summation of uh, how we want to uh, do some tricks and things that help our dog have a positive association at the kennel.